and the committee's recommendations still hold good. Climate change only increases the need to look ahead and prepare for the future. Fortunately, in adopting the National Water Plan, the government has shown that it takes water safety and the need for climate proofing seriously. This year, Mr. Wim Kuyke started his work as the government commissioner for the new Delta program. He presented his first plans last week, and he'll tell you more about that later this morning. The main themes of this new style Delta program are safety and fresh water availability. But it's about much more than that. It's about the economy, the environment, and social development, about how we can plan our country so that our children can live and work here in safety now and in the future. Cooperation is essential between central government, the provincial and local authorities, the water boards, knowledge centers, the business community, and civil society. The challenge is daunting, but I am sure that with the new Delta program, we can face the future with confidence. If we now take a look beyond our borders, we can see what might happen to us if we don't take action. Hardly a week goes by without serious floods, far away and closer to home. Pakistan, China, Brazil, Czech Republic, Germany, France, Britain are just a few countries recently hit by flooding. And the shortage of water can also lead to problems. The devastating, devastating fires in Russia caused by extreme droughts are still fresh in our memories. Our national water plan has a special chapter on worldwide water problems, which the government is committed to tackling. It is called Water Mondial, Global Water. Three themes play a central role, exchanging knowledge, helping to solve problems in other countries, and strengthening the position of the Dutch water sector. To focus on knowledge exchanges, the Netherlands will have multi-year partnerships with five delta areas, deltas that are comparable to the Netherlands in terms of scale and vulnerability. They are in Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Mozambique, and Vietnam. The Netherlands will work with stakeholders and government authorities and will exchange high-grade knowledge. Adaptation strategies will be sought to raise safety levels and create development opportunities in these delta areas. <coughs> Agreements have already been made with Vietnam to work together to improve water management in the Mekong Delta. In Indonesia, the Dutch water sector is actively involved in tackling problems with rivers, flooding, and sinking land in, co in combination with the coastal developments of Jakarta. Other partnerships and networks will also be in the spotlight at this conference. They include connecting Delta cities, the Delta Alliance, and the C40 cities, all of which seek to resolve Delta challenges in the same spirit as Water Mondial. I truly hope that you will succeed in learning from each other and in building new alliances aimed at further cooperation in and between our deltas. Ladies and gentlemen, exactly two months from today, the 16th Conference of, par of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, as we all know, COP16, will be held in Cancun. You will no doubt recall the high expectations we all had of COP15 in Copenhagen but no agreement could be reached on emission reductions and mitigation measures. Water and adaptation hardly came into the picture. I hope that we can now move forward in Cancun. Once again, curbing greenhouse gas emissions will be at the top of the agenda. But even if a crystal clear agreements are reached on that issue, we will still have to adapt to the demands water makes of us. So at COP16, water and adaptation must be prominent on the agenda. This focus on water and adaptation will need to take tangible shape. It will have to be reflected in partnerships, funding mechanisms, exchanges of knowledge and experiences, and most importantly, concrete measures at regional, national, and local level. Adaptation to climate change is urgently needed. Water plays a pivotal role but many politicians have yet to recognize it. 
As a result, adaptation measures in water management are often underrepresented in national plans and international investment portfolios. So significant investments and policy shifts are needed. The costs are high, but are greatly outweighed by the benefits. In the Netherlands, an extra billion euros a year is needed for the Delta Fund. And the World Bank recently estimated the annual cost of climate adaptation in developing countries alone at 70 to 100 billion dollars a year between now and 2050. Many large organizations are working within the UN framework to develop climate adaptation strategies. I mentioned the World Bank, but no fewer than 26 UN agencies are working together in the UN Water Coordination Platform. The UN Water Task Force on Climate Change has drawn up guiding principles for measures on water adaptation, and I would like to share them with you. We have to mainstream adaptation within the broader development environment. Water and adaptation measures are closely linked to infrastructure development, economy, health, agriculture, and energy issues. We have to strengthen governance and improve water management. But let us not reinvent the wheel. Integrated water resources management is a strong tool for linking water with other sectors. We also have to join hands across borders. The UN Secretary General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation, which I have the honor to chair, clearly states that the impact of climate change on the world's shared fresh water resources increases the need for viable transboundary management instruments. We have to invest in sustainable, cost-effective, and adaptive water management and in technology transfer. Let us build long-term resilience through stronger institutions and investment in infrastructure, in sound ecosystems and human capital. And finally, we have to develop adaptation strategies tailored to the needs of each delta. And we can get started with no regrets measures, which have a positive impact on development and are climate proof. To do this, of course, we have to create innovative funding mechanisms as a basis for adaptation in water management, and that requires political will. Ladies and gentlemen, we share a common goal, to keep water on our side and make it work for us, but also keep it at bay. This is no easy challenge at a time of cutbacks, but prevention is better than cure. If we fail to invest in a safe future, the costs will be much higher. And if we look ahead, we will be rewarded with work and prosperity. Cooperation, solidarity, and exchange underpin a climate-proof future for our deltas. In the next few days, you will have the opportunity to work on all three. You will meet experts in your own field and other disciplines, not just from your own country, but from other parts of the world too. And I hope this inspires you to work together on concrete proposals for partnership projects, no regret measures, and adaptation strategies. I'm convinced that our joint efforts at this conference will bring us a step closer to a safe and prosperous future of the world's deltas. I wish you every success and thank you very much. Can we uh, thank His Royal Highness for his personal commitment? It shines out with every word and his, his real global leadership in issues of water management. I hope he stands as a role model for other leaders throughout the world. Our next uh, uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Nguyen Thai Lai from, uh, from the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment in Vietnam. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Lai has a, a background in hydrological modeling and water management. Uh, he's Director General of Vietnam's Department of Water Resources Management and is working towards a new approach to river basin management. And he's going to speak on policies for sustainable development and climate change in Vietnam. Your Royal Highness, Please, William Messenger. 